ROM is sitting on its own now. We've got the shock on there. Boom. Rear wheel on there. Sprocket. Boom. We can actually get on this thing and sit down on without it collapsing. So it's pretty sweet. It's coming along. Next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna add this kickstand on there. This is one of our OG FLP kickstands. If you're a Ruckus guy, I'm sure you know it. This is a stock location right here for the stock ROM kickstand. Sitting a little low once we drop it on, on the rear wheel off the stand. So I was thinking about putting this somewhere on the stung arm. It does have this M6 tab. Try to utilize that. We're gonna open up our CAD design for this and kind of start altering it and see what we come up with. All right, we're here on my screen. This is kind of the outline of our FLP kickstand. This is what we usually water jet cut. We're gonna turn this over because we usually cut them out backwards. Then we're gonna start messing with this. So we're gonna kind of draw a center line kind of to mimic the, the swing arm, like so. I'm gonna rotate this, boom, boom. All right, so now it's all center line. And we can pretend that this is our swing arm in here. I'm gonna uh, go up to this one I have pulled out. We're gonna measure it tight. And we're about two inches, 1.970. So we're gonna offset that line by that amount, like that. So we know this is the top of our swing arm and we don't need all this excess goobly gob in there. We're gonna open up this hole in here to uh, fit over this, over this fitting. And if you look, it has that weld seam and we need the kickstand to sit flush. So we're gonna have to go bigger in diameter than that weld seam. I'm gonna throw a caliper on there. We're about 8.30 or so. So we're gonna open up that hole in there to 8.30 and just get rid of that other one in there, boom. And we're gonna trim off some of this excess going on the top. Cool, so it's starting to look like something now. So the next thing, I can kind of mock this kickstand up on here. So it's gonna be sitting like that. We don't want it rotating around like this and getting crazy. Hey, what's going on? I'm gonna put a little tab in the back end of this. That's kind of gonna you know, lock on this bottom side of the swing arm. So once you torque it down, it should keep it from rotating. And I'm also thinking about popping another hole in here, extend this up a little bit, add some holes, through holes so we can run a bolt all the way through. I'm just drilling holes! With the back plate and just kind of sandwich this whole thing down. It's gonna be super robust after that. Another thing to keep in mind, the Grom is a lot taller than the Ruckus. So we have our extended version, which probably isn't long enough still, but it'll kind of get us in the right direction and we can modify it once we got the prototype mounted up. All right, coming back to the screen, we are gonna put a hole in here. We're gonna do eight millimeters. So it's like 0.320 in inches. Oversize a little bit so the ball doesn't get stuck. Copy that. We're gonna paste it somewhere around here. I'm just delete this, even delete that. Do some tangent circles. All right, so that's pretty much set. We're gonna round this back edge out over here. So it doesn't look so wonky. We're gonna put a quarter inch radius, trim off all the excess. Now, for those of you wondering, we're using DraftSite CAD. It's kind of the same guys that make SolidWorks. It's like, I don't know, 80 bucks for a whole year. It's super legit. We use it all day for uh, water jetting. So that's kind of laid out like that. And we, we're talking about that tab in the bottom. So the way that's going to work, we're going to put this little rectangle in here, like so. It's going to be, we would probably do that one inch wide and then 0.260 tall. And then we're going to grab a tab. No, this is cheating. I already have it done. We're going to grab this tab and that's what's going to kind of go in from the, from the back. And then I did do this on over the weekend. We're just filming to show you guys to kind of give you an inside look on how everything works. But over here is kind of the one that's almost set and done. Uh, we do need to add another mounting hole like we had on the other one, like so. So that's all done. We got our design. We got it water jet cut it's right here. And I did do a prototype prior to this. And we noticed that we had to give it some more angle, kick it out. Ah! to bolt it up to the to the Grom. So we have enough angle when it leans that it's not, not tipping over. We do have to make a, probably a washer. So you can see there's plenty of clearance there to run that tab. So we'll get that welded on. We're gonna have to make a washer to kind of like line it up in here. And then this will be used as a template to drill your two holes to the back. So we're gonna go weld up a tab onto that and then uh, probably make the back spacer for this or the back plate. So kind of crush everything together. We'll put it on our Grom, see how it looks and take it from there. All right, real quick, we're gonna uh, design the back plate that's gonna go behind the swing arm. Just gonna put those two uh, circles on there just to get us our, get the angle. Start drawing some lines on there. Take the line command, tangent, and another tangent to that top circle. Do the same thing on the other side. Done. So now we're gonna extend that. We want it to go to the to the very edge, maybe past a little bit of the swing arm. So this is kind of where you're getting that, that the rollover. So you're gonna get a lot more support there. 
Uh, so when you sandwich it, it doesn't crush the pipe or, you know, it's, it's hollow inside. So we're gonna go a little bit further out and just when you tighten it down, it doesn't collapse the whole thing. Extend, pick the two lines you wanna extend to. And then just like that, we'll move this out of the way. Some fillets in there, probably eighth inch. So we have that back plate. Probably later on, I'll have the uh, the kickstand match that same angle right there. But for now, just to get it done, take this to the water jet, run it, cut another tab, weld it up, fit it up, and see how it looks. All right, I'm gonna get this saved on one of my mini jump drives over here. <laughs> we'll go hit the O Max and uh, get it cut. At the power. Got a piece of scrap in here, nothing fancy. Just gotta cut, cut out those two pieces. So this is where we program the water jet. We are gonna get rid of a couple things because we already have this cut out. And then we're gonna put some tabs on these. Little tiny tabs, boom, boom. Just so they don't sink into the tank once we uh, finish cutting because they're so small. Program set, ready to go. So here's the software where you open up, you set your parameters, tell it that it's steel, we're cutting quarter inch. And we're gonna do a medium cut quality so that it looks nice and crisp. We're gonna go set up our origin on the machine over there and hit cycle start. So we have, uh, we're setting up our origin. We know that there's plenty of room down here to fit our parts. The gap is about 60,000 or so. We're gonna set our zero, raise up the water, let it rip. Woo! All right, so we got that tab cut out. I just kind of want to show you how that fits up real quick. We're just going to slide into this hole in there. Kind of like a Legos puzzle, whatever you want to call it. Then we'll just fuse melt it from the back, from the front. And then this will sit on the center like so. We're going to give it a quick buzz with a D8. Head over to the welder and then uh, try to put it on the swing arm. We're going to give it a quick fuse weld. Uh, just kind of melt this to together in here. And then uh, we'll fill in that gap on the other side and then we'll head over to the ground. We got that kind of melted together in there. You know what? I'll probably fit this up to the ground first so we can adjust the angle that we want it at and then we'll weld it when it's uh, all set and done. Final deal. So we'll head over to the ground, just bump this thing on. You kind of see how it's gonna lock in place. We're gonna go machine out a washer for this. We'll probably use our kickstand puck washers, kind of like this guy in here. Just bore it out so that step will slide into here. And then we'll use M6 bolt just to kind of hold it in place. Once we're holding it in place, we'll uh, use a drill. Use this as a drill guide. And we'll put that plate in the back. We'll uh, do some testing and whatnot. Get a nice big fat heavy guy. Fat bastard. Put him on there and see if we can break it. And if everything goes good, we'll put it on the site. So we're like slightly over a half inch. We'll just get a half inch drill. Throw this on the lathe. Bore that out. And we'll see how that works out. All right, we're going to get this. We're going to put in this chuck. It has a little step in the back. Boom. A lot of booms in this video. Yeah, man. Boom! Michael Bay! Michael Bay! <laughs> <laughs> Manual labor right here, bro. Manual. <laughs> <laughs> you got a hole in that. Got that board out. So we got one of our hardware bolts right here. FLPparts.com. Oh, Very nice. So like one thing that I see like right away that would look better is if I brought this edge to kind of follow the contour of that washer, so I kind of just modify that on my drawing, just so everything looks like that wasn't pulled off of another project to make it work on here. I mean, that's a Grom kickstand. Let's go put it on the Grom. So one thing I did notice, like to put this on might be a little bit of a bit of pain because you're gonna have to take this off to drill those holes in there. But you know, it's all part of the, uh, well, part of the process is kind of figuring out what's the best way to go about it. There's other ones that mount in the back on the swing arm over here, which is cool. I don't know, I just kind of wanted it more hidden in here, more, a little bit more OEM looking. All right, that song, look at that. That even looks good. You even got the FLP logo kicked out in there. That way you know it's authentic. I'm gonna bring it down to the ground. That leg doesn't have to be longer. So right now it has this like crazy gangster lean. Probably a little bit excessive, but we can get a longer, uh, longer leg, maybe about an inch and a half, two inches. And then it's always adjustable, right? Like you can go shorter, but I think there are some that are lower than this, which is crazy. But for our setup, two inches longer, that should be it. I'm gonna pull it out, weld it all the way, order some long bolts, but I mean, that's kind of it. Kind of wraps it up. It kind of gets you a good idea of what it takes when we're designing something. Sometimes it's pretty quick and easy like that because we already had a baseline from a uh, ruckus and you just have to adapt it to this. Keep an eye on the site. We're gonna have them on there where you can say cat in the hat, flpparts.com.